What's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thanks to the guys over at Thermaltake, we're taking a look at their new UX200 high airflow CPU cooler. So, I'm not actually plugged this in or anything yet, because we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to go through, the. I've literally not even opened it. So we're going to go through the box together, see what we've got in it, and then I will go away, do my testing and come back with a bit more. So. The UX200, we'll start off with, it is a $30, I haven't actually found any UK pricing on this just yet, but it is $30, 120ml air cooler. It does feature an addressable RGB fan, and that's really about all I know at the moment. Okay, so the fan is PWM and it is RGB. It is actually addressable 5 volt RGB, and I believe uh, you'll just plug this in directly to your motherboard. So let's get into the box and see what we've got. So the packaging is typical Thermaltake, good high quality, plenty of information around on the outs around the outside of the box. I can tell you that this will fit most modern Intel and AMD systems, whether that be the A well, I say most, it will fit these standard systems. So your 1150X systems, it'll even go back to 775 according to the box, as well as AM systems or FM2 or anything like that. So We've got our fan with what appears to be a slightly peculiar selection of wiring. The actual cooler itself, it is black and it does have a slightly strange looking mounting system. We'll get onto that a little bit later because I do know what that is about. And then a little white box with, I am guessing, hopefully, some instructions and some fittings. We do have a little box of goodies, a little black plate, and your warranty policy. We don't need those. So let's take a quick look at what comes in the little baggie. So we do have two sprung clips which are for mounting the fan. The fan is quite easy to mount. I've seen these systems before. So you simply put the little plastic clip on your fan, put the fan against the cooler and stretch it round. It actually goes on the very front of the fan. Stretch and fit. I've seen this system used many times even with other manufacturers. I quite like it as long as they're not too tight. These ones, there you go, simple as that. Nice and easy to fit. Should you wish to remove the fan you simply pull back and this is where they get a bit more interesting pull back and pull up just to release them out obviously you do want to make sure that your fan is actually covering the cooler so you don't want it mounted up above the cooler or anything like that the height adjustment does come in very handy though because it does actually mean that should you need to you can actually raise the fan up a little bit to cover uh, so it doesn't cover any ram now there is very minimal clearance here and if you have RAM that is very close to socket you may have problems but you can simply slide the fan up. Nice big 120mm fan and it is addressable around the outside. Let's see what else we've got. We have got a little bag of plastic clips and plugs. Now this is the Intel bracket. If you're using AMD okay, you don't need anything else. You literally need the cooler and the thermal paste. So with AMD, AMD doesn't have a mounting bracket as such. AMD use a set of holes. And what you do with the holes is you push these into the correct slots. It does actually have information on here. But uh, there we go. You put it in the middle slots for standard Intel. Uh, you can actually mount this to 1366. That's original first gen i7s. You put the little white bits in the slots. You push them down put all four in all the way around all in the same positions okay this you then push onto the motherboard that clips in and you then push the little black bits in and as you, you can see hopefully as I push the black bits in these then push out it just means that they can't then be pulled out easily should you wish to remove it you pull out the black bits okay that's these four and then you pull this off this actually uses what is very similar to the stock AMD mountings, okay? And it is simply a case of, luckily actually having this here, it means I can actually show you exactly how to mount this without even using a motherboard. So you mount your cooler down, okay? 
you clip one side on the side that doesn't have the finger hole and then this second one here okay, you simply pull across you push down and I just popped those through because I forgot I had those there okay you push down and you clip on it's as simple as that okay now this is actually a slightly old-fashioned mounting system AMD don't actually even use this on their own stock coolers anymore but it is incredibly easy to use but what I will say, if you are fitting this to a system where you've already had a cooler and you're running AM4 at least, or even the older system and you've had an aftermarket cooler, okay, if you are fitting this to a system where you've already had the cooler, you may have removed the standard mounting brackets because the stock Intel coolers screw to the back plate. This requires those two little bit of black plastic bits. So if you have removed them, do find your motherboard box where you've probably put them and refit them to your board and then as I said, mounting and installing is actually very simple. On Intel, mount the black bracket first, then take your cooler, okay, mount the short side, there's a short side here, and a long side with a sort of like a, a finger pull. Mount the short side on, obviously you've got to remove the black plastic and stuff, but you mount the short side on, and then you take this other side, you push down, And he says, it's quite difficult when you're not actually looking at what you're doing. Down and in, and then it clips. And that's it. It's fitted. The other thing, obviously, that you do need to do is connect up the power and the RGB for the fan. Now, this does look to be a little bit different here. I know why, um, and I'll get to that in a second. But you do have a 4-pin PWM, which obviously can be controlled by motherboards. And then we have, this is the RGB. We have ground and we have D. So if you take a quick look in the manual, hopefully they've given you a bit of instruction as to how this actually connects because I know what I'll be doing, but not everybody else will. And they do, they are kind enough. Now it would be nice that they are both in black, but they're not. But on the instructions for each motherboard brand, they actually have a pinout diagram. And what it is, the power for the LED is obviously coming from this cable. This cable is the data and the ground and you follow the little instructions and it gives you the information for each required board so if you're using Asus okay we have a ground pin and the data pin and you simply connect these up it just means that without having to include adapters or anything like that you have a completely universal option that will go with all brands and if you know the pinouts of uh, any third-party controllers you may be using you could even connect it up to that so that is the cooler itself. I've got to say so far, it's quite good. It's relatively simple to fit by using the uh, stock AMD mounts. No having to worry about trying to get screwdrivers in and anything like that. It just simply clips on. Intel, you have one extra step that is to mount this little black bracket to the cooler. So I am gonna go away and do my standard testing regime using my Ryzen 7 2700. Okay. I will be using, rather than using the stock include thermal paste in this little packet, now I don't actually know how much is in here, it might be a lot more than is needed, but it's typical, I like to just do pea sized blob in the middle. So, always remember as well, do remove the piece of plastic. I have to put my hands up, I have actually done that once, forgotten to remove the plastic, didn't perform very well. But, simply... I'm going to go away, like I said, I'm going to do my standard set of thermal tests on my Ryzen 7 2700 and we're going to see how it performs. Like I said, I won't be using the included thermal compound, I'm going to be using my control compound which is uh, which is Arctic Cooling's MX4 and then we're going to come back and see just how it performs. So I'm back, I've been away, I've done some testing, got the bottom a little bit dirty but hey. Um, and it is time for thermal results time. So I am gonna do the benchmarks. Let's bring up a little bit of B-roll and the graphs. So as can be seen from the graphs, now all of my temperatures were done, that is delta T, so that is the difference between ambient temperature and the system temperature that just means that I'm out. I, I don't have an air conditioned studio or anything like that anything fancy so I can test in any conditions 
it's not 100% scientific, not going to claim that it is, but it's the best I can do here. So I did delta T temperatures, so although it may say like 50 degrees, ignore that, that is 50 degrees above ambient. So if your ambient is 20, 50 would actually be 70. So I went and did my standard test, that just simulates sort of like unrealistic Ida, we did some rendering workloads and then we did some gaming just to show you what you can realistically expect. And I've got to say, it's impressive. It's a $30, uh, $30 cooler at the end of the day, so it's not exactly expensive. It, it outperformed the stock cooler. Yeah, it did. Um, it's not up there with the likes of the massive Be Quiet coolers that I've tested in the past. It's also not anywhere priced anywhere near them as well, though. So I've got to say, performance, quite good. Not amazing, but it's a thirty pound, a thirty dollar cooler at the end of the day. I'm not expecting this to sort of blow your socks off, but it's definitely good enough. Nothing to complain about. Noise levels, I'm going to say, were relatively quiet. Noise levels, though, are always a subjective and b down to the fan curve that you stick on it. If you stick an aggressive fan curve on it where it's running at 100%, you're going to hear it. If you just let it to sort of run a little bit warmer but quieter, you're barely going to hear this thing. This was my only little thing though. It, this, it just feels a little bit cheap. But it did do the job. I did have to obviously go through there, find the right header and make sure I connected it up. But it did the job and the RGB on this, obviously the ability to control it is all down to your motherboard. If you have a decent board with decent software, it's lovely and nice and easy to control. If you're running a horrendous board with horrendous software, it's a nightmare. But I put it on a Gigabyte Aorus Gaming 7 board I've used the Aura software for a long time, so I didn't have any problems at all. It is nice and bright. It's uh, the frosting around the outside is all frosted. That did actually help diffuse the colours quite a lot. So yeah, overall, very good cooler. Thirty dollars. If you're looking to upgrade, if you've not got the Wraith, I think it's the Wraith Spire RGB, the one that comes with the 2700X. I would definitely say this is a good upgrade over any sort of like the solid cord. Uh, coolers that you get from AMD. If you're running one of those heat piped ones, okay, there's a difference but not quite so much. But if you are looking at upgrading for something a little bit bigger, obviously you do have to bear in mind the height of this. This is 154 mil high. It will fit into most cases, but some you may have interference. Do check the compatibilities with your case. Obviously, small form factor things, anything like that, not gonna work. But there we go. That is the new Thermaltake UX200. I'm going to give it a big thumbs up, it's it's 30 quid, it's relatively quiet, it looks quite cool. Yeah, it's not an ugly controller, obviously when you stick your fan on, rotate your fan around so that these cables aren't poking out the top like that, I just threw it on. And yeah, quite good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick some links below as to where you can buy one, and as always, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, not a problem, and if you want to see more of me, click that little subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, thank you very much. My name's Tom from Techstream, and if you want to see me, I will be back the same time next week. Thank you very much, and bye for now.